Perfect. All right. Uh, we are ready to get started. And we'll go first to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Patrick, two quick questions for you. Uh, first, uh, this is another year of you running the physical part of the camp. Um, as you design the day to day, can you just give a little glimpse of like how you uh, particularly plan that out? Um, yeah, it's um, it's kind of collaborative with the coaches and then with me and the players. But uh, in the morning, um, we get a workout in, um, just kind of get guys moving. There's therapy there so guys can get their – whatever warrant they need to do um, if they don't want to get an actual full workout, they want to get some work in um, to get themselves ready to run routes. Um, and then we, we get the routes in and the right after that um, it's like three to three times a week, two to three times a week, depending on the, the week and the plan um, with the coaches. And then uh, we meet with the coaches at 12 o'clock. So it's, it's a pretty, it's pretty good. You kind of get everybody in and out before two o'clock, whenever the meeting's in, um, but uh, it gets good work in. And then just the other thing, coach Reed uh, said, the organization is dealing with the Rashid thing. He did confirm he's been on the Zooms. Are you throwing with him? And if not yet, do you do you plan to throw with him at some point in this phase? Yeah, I've, I've worked uh, with Rashid throughout the uh, the off season, just in general. Um, so uh, I'll, I'm sure we'll continue that work as the legal process plays out. Let's go next to Sam McDale. Go, ahead, Sam. Hey, Patrick um, and Brad. I'll have a, a couple things as well. Um, what, what benefit do you obviously you've run this for a couple of years now? What benefit have you seen uh, out of this camp the last couple of years that, that you've been doing in, in Texas? Um, I don't think it's um, I wouldn't say that it's it's a too much different than being up at the facility, but at the same time, I think just the guys hearing it from me, um, because we get the workouts in before the meetings, um, hearing how I explain things, how I explain the routes, what I'm kind of thinking, um, and then getting to go into the meeting room, um, and hear the coaches and how they explain this stuff, and how do we kind of we blend that together. I think it's just a, uh, that, that good one-on-one -on -one interaction with me. I mean, sometimes, especially this time of the year, those, those lines get long uh, with a lot of receivers, a lot of tight ends, a lot of running backs, whatever it is. Um, and so to be able to explain my thought process, thought process one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I think it gives guys a good uh, intro into what the coaches are thinking and the coaches can really detail the details. Along those lines, obviously Hollywood's a new guy to you. What what stood out about him so far? And and sorry, I tried to sneak in a third question. Wanted, wanted to know what you thought about uh, seeing Messi play on Saturday night as well. Yeah, no, with, with Hollywood, um, I think you obviously you see the speed. Um, you see the speed. I mean, instantly. Um, but I think um, what I've what I've liked so far is how hard he works. Um, he's been at all the work. He's been at the workouts. He's been at the route the route running. Um, and he wants more. He wants to continue to push himself more and more. And um, I think he has a hill of a great uh, role in this offense, the way he's able to run routes, the way he's able to stretch the field. Um, I think he'll be even different than you've seen him before because I think he, we could utilize him in different ways that I think uh, he hasn't been utilized uh, in yet. Um, and then as far as Messi, I mean, just it's awesome, man, to see the guy, guy at the top of top of the, uh, the any league in the entire world. And, I mean, you saw in the certain spots that he had um, where he wasn't marked or he wasn't free, uh, where he got free. I mean, he made stuff happen with the pass that he made, the vision that he had, um, and then the goal that he scored. I mean, it, it shows you the, what it is like when you have the top of the top kind of plan at any profession. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Patrick. Um, you, you talked a minute ago about Hollywood. Um, you said maybe he can be used in some different ways than he's been used before. Knowing that you're not the coach, um, what, what what roles maybe do you see for him uh, as this thing goes forward? And uh, Brad, I'll have a second question as well. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think everybody's seen his speed and the way he's able to track the football down the field, which I, we'll obviously use. Um, that's something that that's huge that we I think we need to continue to get better and better at in this offense. Um, but I think the route running is what I've been pleasantly surprised by. I mean, just the way he's able to get in and out of his cuts. He has a good feel for space. Um, and uh, he wants to, like I said, he wants to learn more and more. So I think as he gets within our offense and learns how with the freedom that you have with your route running and your ability to find space, I think um, we can utilize that ability over the middle of the field. Um, I know he's done that in the past, but I think we can utilize it at an even higher uh, a higher uh, load. So I think it'll be uh, um, something that we can really uh, emphasize in our offense. Okay. I mean, you, you talked a minute ago about these uh, sessions you've had down in Texas. How does it help you as kind of being the – the coach without the coaches down there, how does that help you? Uh, you're kind of the only voice there here and down there. How does that help you if, if at all? Um, I think what helps me the most is that I hear them. Talk, I get to hear what they are thinking and what they're, what they're, what they're really going. I think when sometimes when the coach is around, they want to do exactly how the coach says, which is, which is the right thinking. But whenever I can hear what they're thinking, whenever they're running their routes, 
it helps me know where they're going to be at and what what their timing is going to be. And um, that's something that, that I try to do on d- during the year, but there's kind of a lot of things that you're worried about during the uh, season or trying to run the, do the thing just how the coach says, but when I can hear them and we talk it through um, and we hear from the coaches, we can all be on the same page. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Patrick, considering uh, you guys have done this now for a few years, what do you find most enjoyable about starting anew? And what do you find to be most difficult when, uh, you know, two months ago you were playing in the Super Bowl? Um, I think what I find most enjoyable is just building those relationships with the guys. I mean, every single team is different. Um, and just getting the guys, especially getting them down here and seeing them outside the building, um, trying to do different things, trying to get dinners, whatever it is. You get to meet the guy. Um, and I think that's what brings – brings the team closer together. And so that's something that I enjoy, especially about this part of the year. Um, at the same thing, and then like you're talking about, I mean, it, it, if you win the Super Bowl, it's awesome, but it makes the off season shorter. And so I'm um, trying to make sure that I get time to myself and my family. Um, it's something that's very important to me. And so I try to still inter- intertwine that with um, keeping my body in the, the right shape so that I can go out there and try to try to quest to try to get the three peat. Let's go next to Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. And, and Brad, I'll, I'll follow up. Um, the three Pete Patrick. I mean, it's it's out there now that you guys have accomplished the other two. I'm I'm just curious how much you guys discuss it and how much of a carrot it is for you. Um, it'll be something that I think was kind of discussed more after we won the second one. Um, now that we're kind of back and we're starting starting back from the beginning, that's how you have to start. You have to start from the beginning. Go back to your fundamentals. Um, I'll be going over like fronts and stuff today. Stuff that I, it might get a little tedious, but stuff that I need to know and. Um, the coach is going to get a laugh out of it because they know that I, it kind of irritates me sometimes, but that's how it is. You have to go back to the beginning, uh, go back to your elementary school and learn it from the, from the beginning. And I, and I think that's something that, uh, um, has kind of gotten us to where we're at is that you can't be satisfied with where you're at. You have to learn and you learn, pick up one little different thing that you didn't know the year before. And so, um, that's something that I'll continue to, to work on throughout this off season and prepare myself. Um, and then once we get to the season, we'll try to make that, that run at it, but it's going to take a day in day out, uh, type of mentality. All right, and then uh, the draft, uh, we've heard comments in the past where you've talked about different conversations you've had with Brett Veach. Uh, have, you, have you put your draft board together for him? Have you have you laid out a lot of the, the places you're looking? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I look at some of the stuff. I mean, I think what um, it's cool that Veach and Coach Reed kind of let me in, in on all the conversations that they have um, about players, and I, I like that stuff. I like watching film and watching other guys from college and stuff like that. Um, but at the end of the day, man, I mean, we have – the, the greatest of the great as far as GM and uh, head coach and the staffs that they've built. Um, and so I know they're going to get great players in here. Um, I'll give my input, but I, I trust that they're, they're going to do the work to, to get the great players in. And you've seen our team. It seems like we get younger and younger every single year. That's, that comes from drafting. Good time for a couple more. We've got meetings coming up. So we'll go to Jesse Newell. Go ahead, Jesse. Hey, Patrick, wanted to ask you this before we got too far from the Super Bowl. There was a video that caught you saying that you checked to a play you hadn't run since training camp. Uh, it might have been that Jarek McKinnon screen, but I just wanted you to see, could, could you explain what happened on that particular play? No, that was, it was really cool. So that was something that we had we'd worked on in training camp. We had talked about it in years in the past, about some of the blitz looks that the teams had showed us of getting to that check. Um, and we worked on it in training camp. And just, uh, of course, all year long, we never got the look that we wanted. Um, and, then all this, and then you get in the Super Bowl and a third down and a huge moment in the game. Um, and, of course, you get the exact look you're, you're thinking about. And we probably had ran it in practice kind of like once maybe every week or once every other week to kind of prepare ourselves. But it, it speaks to the guys, man. I mean, not only me of getting to the check, but the guys, the offensive line, knowing how to block and leave the right guy free. The Jared McKinnon being able to bluff the guy that we, where we had the cross protection most of the game. He bluffs the guy, gets loose. And then the, the receiver's making the block um, out in space and – you never know. It's one of those plays that you, you anybody can be in. It's kind of a check at the line of scrimmage. And so everybody was prepared and ready for the moment. Um, and that comes with that, like I said, that tedious fundamentals from day one is we do this stuff to prepare ourselves for the Super Bowl, but you have to do it on a day-in process. And we'll go last to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Patrick. You've got some other new guys down there, not just Hollywood, but some other as well. What kind of stood out? What is what's kind of some of those guys done to impress you? And, and I guess particularly the one that most people are asking about is Luis Rezamet. He's been down there with you too. No, I think what stood out is how hard the guys want to work. I think that's always great. I mean, I'm I'm I say it and people take it for granted, but I mean, it, 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 you have to get guys that want it. Uh, I mean, this is off season. This is time you could be anywhere in the world, spend it on vacation, and these guys have come in and they've came. I'm in my hometown in my house, so it's easy for me to go work out and throw. But these guys are 
in hotels or in the Airbnbs and they're, they're down here getting work in and they want to be great. And that, that's awesome. And so guys like Nico and Anthony Miller um, and, and Lewis, I mean, they, they've all done, they've all done a great job of getting in here and learning from the guys in front of them, guys that have been here. Um, and I, I, I've always, I always enjoy guys like Sky um, and Kadarius, all these guys that are teaching too at the same time. I think um, it's a healthy competition. That's what you want in any, any, um, team, um, and I think we have a great team for it. And so um, I'm excited to see these guys as we continue to evolve this offense and, and get them on the field. Patrick, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you all.